Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Lives Transforming Video Training Series. Our series is based on the book Freedom by author Derek Wilder. My name is Brent Henderson. Derek, today's topic, we're going to be going back about coveting again, wanting what we don't have. And I wanted my wife to show up. I wanted her to come whenever I was going to be speaking somewhere. I wanted her to be there uh, if I was going to be singing, whether it was on the big stage or a small thing. And honestly, I had these expectations. You know, I thought my wife should be there. Oh, you wanted her to be part of your fan club. Uh, exactly. <laughs> and, you know, and, and I didn't think that's really what it was. But to be honest with you, I wanted her respect because I felt like if she came and put her stamp of approval on what I was doing, because I trust my wife's judgment, well, then somehow that meant I'm okay, I'm doing well, I have her respect. And if, and if she didn't show up for these things, then my emotions were tanked. Now, Derek, why do we do this? Uh, a popular book out right now. Well, it's not. It was, it was out about six or seven years ago. It's a book called Love and Respect. And the subtitle says, The Love She Most Desires, The Respect He Desperately Needs. Derek, I read that book, you know, about five years ago. And let me tell you what I did. This is really funny. The book, you know, there was a lot of great things in the book. But what I did with the book was so unhealthy. I got a copy for my wife. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't want to read the book. I want to get my wife to read right. the Right. You need to read this, honey. I read it. Wow, there's some things in there you need to read. Yeah, exactly. Because I desperately need your respect. Yeah. This is a fascinating topic, actually. I've, I've talked and coached and worked with so many men over the years, especially pastors, especially pastors who have struggled so much with this concept of, of needing uh, their wives respect in order for them to be okay. And, and accordingly they they get very troubled. Then it gets into, well, I need to, she needs to submit and she needs to do this and that in order for, you know, because I need to have the respect I need, especially if I'm a pastor or something well, like and, that. And I feel so bad for pastor's wives because there is this hidden expectation level that she needs to be there. If this church is all three services on a weekend, she needs to be there for all three. She needs to be sitting in the front row. She needs to be smiling and greeting and knowing everybody. Yeah, it's, it's, it is a very challenging situation. And in particular, you have pastors then, well, everybody, all, all men, and they're really convinced that uh, if they can get what they don't have, uh, which is her respect, then everything will be just fine. And marriage will be on track. Life will be on track. Uh, they can continue doing their job well, but their wife just needs to change and, and respect them more because he desperately needs it, according to this book subtitle. <laughs> okay. So anyways, I'm sitting at I'm sitting at Panera Bread with a with a pastor, and he's talking to me about this how upset and frustrated he is with his marriage. And so, you know, we start talking and he starts explaining how he desperately needs respect from his wife and he doesn't have it and wants what he doesn't have and and so I just asked him a simple question. I just said, Bob, of course, that's not his name. I said, Bob, why do you need her respect? And he just sat there in dumb silence. He goes, what? I said, well, I've got a notepad here, and I'd like to write down some reasons why you need her respect for you to feel good. <laughs> I hate being in the hot seat like that, because then you start feeling like, I can't come up with anything. Okay, I get it. It's all about me. Yeah. And so and so this is a, a revelation that quite frankly is extraordinarily powerful. To say, for instance, that it's not good for a wife to respect their husband is ridiculous. As ridiculous as saying it's not good for a husband to love their wife. Of course it's a good thing for a husband to love their wife. And of course, it's a great thing for a, a wife to respect their husband. There's nothing wrong with that. But that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is a, a husband needing desperately to have uh, his wife's respect in order for him to feel good about himself, to have something he doesn't have in order for him to be OK. And so it goes something like this. Uh, the actions are easy in this one. Uh, some of the women that might be listening to this that are, have been married for any length of time uh, hopefully will relate to this because I know my wife will. 
See, if, if I want my wife's respect and I'm not getting my wife's respect and, be, and that's causing me a lot of frustration and anxiety, the action that's going to come out of that is going to be ugly. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to try to manipulate my wife to try to get her to respect me somehow. I might try to shame her. I might try to get her to, I mean, anytime you start the, the, the sentence, get her to. Right. This is not a good thing. <laughs> it's going to get ugly quick. Uh, so what happens is, is she starts feeling manipulated. She starts feeling shamed. To be honest with you, with all those actions that are happening in order to try to get my wife to give me the respect that I need desperately in order to feel good about myself, all of a sudden, do you think her respect quotient is going to go up in that moment? No, it's going way down. Yeah. And so, the, so we start actually doing things that cause even less respect. Because we so desperately need our wives to respect us. Again, it's a paradox, uh, but that's the action. And then the emotion, of course, I already mentioned, is frustration and, and even anger. And the thought really is as simple at times as, I desperately need my wife to respect me. And so, actually, that day at, at lunch, I just we just kind of talked about it, and that's a thought we came up with. I desperately need my wife to respect me. There's two ways to solve the angst that comes out of this problem. One of the ways to solve the angst is to get your wife to respect you. And I think most right. people that are reading the Love and Respect book are thinking, oh, the solution is to get my wife to respect me. However, maybe the solution is the first half of the subtitle and not the second. In other words, maybe a solution that could possibly get respect to work in your marriage is for you to love your wife. Right. <laughs> As opposed to focusing on getting your wife to respect you. And we always go to using the scripture verse, if nothing else works, hey, it says right here. Yeah. And then you go back to the submission verse, and, and and we forget the last phrase of the submission verse, which is, as unto the Lord, as yeah. opposed to, as unto the Lord, Brent. Yeah. Or and as Christ doesn't, loved the it church doesn't say, or Yeah, that's right. It doesn't say, submit to you, your husband as unto the Lord, Brent. <laughs> right? <laughs> So we get down to this thought that says, I desperately need my wife to respect me. But the fact of the matter is, there's absolutely nothing further from the truth. Uh, in fact, I don't need my wife to respect me in order for me to be okay with myself. But clearly, if I'm thinking, I want what I don't have. And I need what, now I'm like, well, I need what I don't have. I desperately need what I don't have. Clearly, this lands right square in the middle of coveting. What about some verses around this subject that, that, that we can pull up here? Yeah, you know, one of the my favorite ones, uh, out of the message, Eugene Peterson paraphrases the first few verses of 1 Peter 4. Since Jesus went through everything you're going through and more, learn to think like him. Think of your suffering as a weaning from that old sinful habit of wanting to get your way. Then you'll be able to live out your days free to pursue what God wants instead of being tyrannized by what you want. A couple words here that are so critical. The old sinful habit of always expecting to get your own way and how that tyrannizes your life. And then another word here that's incredible, which is then you'll be able to live out your days free. free. That's the one that got me. Yeah. I mean, free. Free of the specific circumstances of a wife doing a certain thing or a husband doing a certain thing in order for me. See, I'm in bondage. If I have to rely on my spouse to do X, Y, Z in order for me to be content, then I'm in bondage. I'm in prison to what they decide to do next. Yeah. This verse says, then when we disconnect from needing what we don't have or wanting what we don't have, then we can live out our life free, free to pursue what God wants. In other words, instead of being so focused on what we want, we can actually focus on what God wants. In my marriage, I've noticed that God is way more concerned about me lining up with what he wants, which is me loving my wife, than me lining up with what I want, which is me trying to get my well, wife yeah. to respect me. Derek, you know, the thing you said again, that word free, I think of the book Freedom. And if you haven't read the book Freedom out there, guys, you've got to really read this thing. It's got so many real life scenarios like what we talk about here, but it, it set me free. And what set me free was being able to understand truth 
um, the way that God intended it to be, not through the door of religiosity or legalism or control, you know, fixing all those things. But God did create us to be free, free to know that when he is in us, we are complete and we don't need anybody else's approval. It doesn't come from how well we perform to get our self-worth. We really are free. Guys, I hope you really enjoyed this week. This is always big for me. Every single week we go through this. And I hope you'll come back with us next time for more Lives Transforming. Take care.